This is a special meeting of the general members of the Belmont County Republican Committee and the state committee members. Uh, the first part, in this first part of the meeting, unfortunately, we're having to deal with two instances of uh, behavior that came to our attention in the last meeting and that uh, basically are inconsistent with our values. So I'd like to call on Mark A. Bear to start it off, please. Thank you, Mr. what we're here to, to discuss tonight and to act on is that on October 3rd, uh, the Belknap County Republican Committee sent out a um, blast email to our list announcing the guest speaker at the BCRC meeting for October would be Brendan Smith, the editor for the New York Times. Sometime thereafter, Mr. Smith advised the BCRC Executive Committee that Greg Huff you know, contacted the staff of the New York Times asking that he, Mr. Smith, withdraw as our speaker. The request was that Mr. Smith not only withdraw from the speaking engagement, but purposefully delay his withdrawal until just a few hours before the meeting so that a substitute speaker uh, would be difficult and impossible to obtain. Uh, offended and troubled, Mr. Smith conveyed the information to uh, uh, Vice Chair Terry, indicating that he had no intention of withdrawing as our speaker. The actions of Mr. Huff appear purposely designed to uh, attempt to disrupt the orderly conduct of the BCRC meeting. Uh, such a, uh, an action uh, is both subversive and harmful to the BCRC. Uh, further uh, reflects badly on the Republican Party. Uh, unacceptably disruptive behavior should not be tolerated by any organization intending to be a going concern. We do intend on remaining as a going concern. So, uh, uh, what I would like to Executive committee uh, charge correctly describe your actions. Did you call the New York Times? You did not. Nope. Did you interact with anybody from the New York Times? Nope. Okay. Um, have you had uh, any conversation with someone from the New York Times about uh, uh, someone representing themselves as Greg Huff? Did, did they call you up and say, hey, uh, is this really you? Did you re no. Somebody represented that you called. Did somebody confirm with you that they either had or had not? Okay. The uh, representation made by the people from the New York Times and, and more than one person uh, gave us information that said that you had uh, made the attempt to call or contact the New York Times for this purpose. So you're saying that that's incorrect information. How would they do that? Have a comment or you would like to respond. I'm trying to get okay. to the bottom my, of it. My I'm not trying to cross-examine you. Okay, uh, my I'm trying to get to the right answer. And the only way I know to do that is to ask the question. Sure, okay, that's fine. Um, the I information that we have is uh, email sent to us. Mm -hmm. There's evidence. I think it actually 
you're out of order, Mr. Board. Like you didn't sign in. I'd like to you make a motion. I did sign in. I'd like to make a motion. You have no motion. motion. You're out of order. You have, order. Order. You have no stay at standing in your representative board because you never joined the BCRC. I was you have no standing. Member, I have you have no standing. I have standing. You have no standing to make any voice or vote. You do not. No, you do not. You're out of order. You do not have a right to ask for a motion. No. Okay. Sign my motion. Thank you. The rules are the rules. Even for you, representative the board, this is like the house. There are rules and there are I'd rules. Like to make a motion. You cannot object to the rules. I can. Well, go ahead and object somewhere else if you you have no basis yeah. for keep going, going forward. Keep going. Don't tell me I can keep going. You just keep going. You don't give me permission to do anything up here. And you give me permission? I'm not giving you permission. That's exactly what I'm saying. What keep do going. I understand keep about going. this? Please. You're not being given permission. Please. You're out of order. Okay. Go. Thank you. Mark to Bailey. Uh, Mr. Vice Chair, uh, could you convey the contents of uh, the email that was received by us uh, with the information as we received it? Uh, yes, at uh, 5.21 p.m. on October 10th, 2022, I received the following email from Brendan Thomas Smith. Good evening, Paul. Hope all is well today. This morning, our blank here at the Weird Times came in to talk to me. An employee of the Weird Times came in and talked to me. Blank was passing along a message from an acquaintance who is also, I believe, a member of the Belknap County Republican <coughs> Committee. This person was uncomfortable with asking me really wants nothing to do with politics, but told acquaintance would give me the message. In other words, this acquaintance of this person. It seems that a few in the committee want me to cancel my talk at the meeting this Wednesday. In other words, the very same day, this email comes at 5.22 p.m. on October 10th, the same day as the meeting. Last minute, if possible, so that there would not be a speaker and there would then be more time for them to try and fulfill some agenda. What that agenda is, I'm not sure. I am a bit taken aback that someone would consider using me as a pawn for this particular agenda. In all honesty, I don't even know the, I don't even know personally who asked our employee, I only know the name. The fact that I wasn't asked personally by a third party, <coughs> no matter what my response may, might be, is irksome. I debated writing this, but not wanting, to, not wanting to become embroiled in whatever this whole mess is, but after thinking about it, I decided to write you as a friend. I'm still more than happy to come and tell the Weird Times story to the members of the BCRC on Wednesday, but I don't want to be there. It's going to be turned into some kind of a sideshow. I'd like to keep separate from whatever this might be. Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions. I responded at 5.47 p.m. Hi, Brendan. I'm sorry to hear what has taken place and how you've been affected. Are you able to tell me who asked that you cancel out on us? I hope you will resist any pressure that may be applied to you. Your talk is not going to be political as an advocating for any particular candidate. That's not the point of the appeal to you. The point is apparently to embarrass us. In fact, I recall we discussed that your talk would be more personal in nature and how you came to work for the Weird Times and what it's been like and so forth. That will be just what we want. Please hold the line and see you, see you tomorrow night. There is a response to Sydney. May I continue, Representative Board, or do you have the floor? Thank you. I still have the floor. At 6.05 p.m., Brendan Thomas Smith responds to me and, and wrote, Hi, Paul. I don't feel intimidated, just a bit angry. I understand the nature of my talk, and as I said, I am more than happy to still be there, just don't want it to be more than what it is supposed to be. 
It was Greg Huff that asked the message to be given to me. The other name I don't recall. Subsequently, when we asked if he would be willing to give us the name of the second person who was whose name was mentioned to him by the employee who relayed the message, having been approached, she said, he said, by Greg H Representative Greg Huff, that name was disclosed to us. And I'm prepared to disclose that name if Ms. Uh, Mr. Adair would want me to do so. But that, but that person is not directly involved right now and is secondary to the matter before us. But that is, those are the texts that are being asked. And so, uh, we're in a position, I'm in a position right now of having to wonder whether these people just concocted all of this. Having never met any of these people before, not knowing them, and all of a sudden, out of the clear blue sky, somebody calls, somebody writes to me and says, I was asked to cancel my talk with you tonight and to do it as late, uh, tomorrow night, and to do so as late as possible so as to embarrass you. You couldn't get another speaker. And to fulfill some sort of, apparently, apparently to fulfill some sort of other agenda is, is this in my absence. Is this an actual conversation? Is this, I thought you read I am, I am describing to you. What, what it says? The situ I, I'm describing to you that these emails did not come solicited on my part, Representative Huff. They came to me unsolicited by people that we had never known before. And the can question would become, Representative Huff, why would these people possibly just concoct this stuff out of thin air and make these accusations against you? And I return to uh, Representative Adair. Absolutely right. This is a this no, it's not a joke. It's a joke. I, 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 I want to say, say that's no, ridiculous. Once again, you're calling into into uh, uh, what? into our you're calling our integrity into yes this yes question I am because yes, we I are we're pursuing the motion. matter. This is this is a serious matter. Yeah, this is serious a matter. Matter. Make a motion. It is not a joke. No, it, yeah, yeah, it is. It is and not I, a joke. If you would give me a moment, I'm going to explain to you why it's a joke. You're belittling these proceedings by no, calling I'm, it a joke. No, I'm not belittling you're these proceedings. You're being given full opportunity to respond to questions and make statements when appropriate. It is not a joke. This is due process. I would like to make a motion. You cannot make a Oh my gosh. You have no standing, no standing here, Representative. I am a state committee member. You, are, I do you have, have standing no standing here. here. Standing Under general, the bylaws, you are not no, a member. Under the bylaws that you made up out of the place. Well, you made up out of what? Mr. Point Chairman, of I Mr. Think Chairman, I would like to have the Representative no. Borders no. removed from the meeting because he is disrupting it's the proceedings. It's completely entirely right. inappropriate. Representative we should be being the pledge, and we should be thanking our candidates who won yesterday. This is appalling. This is a disgrace. Immediately, please, Chairman, please get this meeting to order. We are not going to they stop in the middle of these proceedings. Right. Please sit down and allow this proceeding to continue. Where is the flag? Please sit down and hmm. stop disrupting the proceeding. You are not in charge of this meeting. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, please, may I have you And the meeting was called to order. I called on Representative A. Bear, who then asked Representative, Representative Terry to hear the text of the emails and the discussion about the source of the emails. I understand, but you think that there's a lot of loose discourse. I mean, well, there's a lot of loose discourse because people want to talk. Oh, oh no. Because we have a thing that's going to be happening here very shortly. A 
thing that is very important for us to look at, and that is the election of our council over here. Okay, that's what's coming up. They know they've done a crap job, and I am going to run for the chair. All the motions are out of order. Let Mr. Huff speak. Mr. Chairman, may I make a few comments? Uh, let's let Mark continue. What we have at this point is we have a, uh, a situation where uh, the BCRC Executive Committee has been made aware of the attempt to undermine the uh, speaker and the uh, meeting agenda at the last meeting intentionally. That is a, an attack on the uh, BCRC uh, at its core. What we have to decide tonight is whether we believe the, the information we got the email from the weird time. May the I be, be, be request for a question? Asking you to or reaching out to uh, the weird time. That is the information that has been, been communicated to us. This is in a court of law. We're using uh, our own best judgment based on the uh, information that was not solicited, but sent to us by uh, members of the community. Now, what we need to decide tonight is whether or not we believe that the Weir's Time has some motive to make false representations about uh, the action uh, that you took. Now, perhaps you didn't take it. I'm not. I'm going to leave that to the general membership to make their own uh, decision on this. What I want to make sure of is that the general members have the information that the executive committee has. I am also going to make the recommendation that uh, we put this to a vote as to whether you remain a member or not because such action, if it is uh, deemed by the general membership to be uh, destructive of the organization, should require a response. And it's their decision, not my decision, not the executive committee's decision, to take action. So that's what we're here to do tonight, to try and get the information that we have out to the general members so the general members can make their own decision. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, I would like to move that the uh, general members consider that Mr. Huff has failed to fulfill his duties and responsibilities of membership as per Article 3, Section 1B2, which reads, duties and responsibilities of general members shall include demonstrable support of the activities of the, the county committee. Uh, accordingly, uh, Mr. Huff's actions with respect to uh, disrupting last month's meeting by trying to subvert the uh, speaker are uh, definitely not... Uh, moment, 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 please. You're making a motion? I am making a motion. Let's let him make his motion. Discussion on the motion? Not, not to be yes. 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 So make the motion and let's let's proceed. Section uh, 1B2 uh, reads uh, duties and responsibilities of general members shall be demonstrable support of the activities of the com uh, county committee. Uh, the actions that uh, we have to been made aware of are not a good demonstration of support of this committee. Uh, I don't mean the executive committee, I mean the Belknap County Republican Committee. 
Is there a second? I second that. I have a second here. Uh, is there any discussion on the motion? Discussion? Steve? Okay, so I wanted to present a question to, to Paul Terry. Um, were all the were all the communications by email only, or did you have any face to face or uh, telephone um, face -to -face. communications? There, there were uh, face to face discussions with Mr. Smith subsequent to the uh, sending of the email. Okay, uh, we I, I was just wondering. I mean, like emails can be, um, you know, at the personal meeting, but I guess that if that's a bit. It was. It was only after a face to face discussion with uh, Mr. Smith that he, um, he offered in the meeting to tell us the name of the second person whose name was given to him by the employee of the New York Times along with Representative Huff in the request for him to cancel the speaking engagement with us and to do so at the latest possible moment. Any further uh, discussion? Um, uh, is, is this, are we locked into removing the person from the membership or can the, we revoking the general the membership in other words we have a there's the bylaws specify a category of membership called general membership yeah. and that has to be done if there's an application process yeah. reviewed by the executive committee a recommendation is made and the general members existing general members then vote to approve the recommendation yeah. so when that, that basically that's the status that has been attained right now by representative huff what this motion seeks to do is to revoke that status designation as a general member. Is, is, is there an alternate, like maybe censuring or something less severe? The, the motion is the motion. The motion is the motion. Can I ask a question? So, so what it's probably having to be a burden on this evidence that we have based on the email, we know the guy's name, but what more do we know? How can we verify that that guy is a real person? Like, do we, I don't, what if it is some Democrat operative, for instance, or just drawing it off the cuff? Like, I don't, I just don't know. Wendy, we, can, we can judge this based on hearsay and this one name. Who is this person? Wendy Smith is the editor of the, uh, the Weird Times. He came and appeared. Uh, he was here last month to give a speech before us. Um, he exists. He's real. Um, we have both email and, and, and face-to-face communication with Mr. Smith. That's why we uh, brought the, the accusation to the general membership. So he's saying that he heard directly from Greg that that Greg asked no. him to. No, no, you want me to clarify? Yes. Yes. Confirm yes. what read the email? Mm -hmm. The email came from Brendan Smith to me and the email indicated that he had been informed by another employee at the Weird Times of the request. That person was passing along the request to him based on uh, two individuals who were seeking to have him cancel the speaking engagement with us with the additional request that the cancellation be communicated to us as late as possible. I'd like and to make it was because he was so upset by this oh, that he sent me the, the first email. There were subsequent emails uh, which I've read and additionally uh, we met with him uh, in, person. in person to clarify all of this and to ask him if he'd be willing to give us the name of the second person because we didn't know whether it was a general member or not. And if it was a general member, then we were going to have to consider uh, a, a disciplinary proceeding against the other general member. And it turned out that the person is not currently a general member, the, the second person. Dr. Stein, does that answer your question? Dr. Stein? Uh, it, usually, it, it, does that answer the question? So, I'll just answer, to answer clarify, so we don't, we know that one of the persons that contacted mm -hmm. the employee of Brendan Smith used to be a general member. No, no he is a general, general member. He's a general it's member. Yes, it's Greg Huff. Well, Greg Huff is the, is the person who was named yeah, by, the, by the employee and by Brendan Smith to us as the person who wanted him to cancel the meeting, uh, cancel his engagement. Okay. At the speaking engagement with us last month and to do so.
comment, uh, discussion? Any anyone in the back that hasn't spoken already? No. Dave. Um, as you know, I was not able to be here at the October meeting because of my work schedule. I want to make this very clear. This is not about the executive committee <coughs> versus Greg Tuck. This is not about revenge. This is about our job protecting this committee. This is your committee, okay? And when you have if people- Representative, like representative boards, if you continue to make outbursts, you will be removed from the meeting. Thank you. So our job as the executive committee is to protect this <coughs> county committee. And when it is brought to our attention by someone who's not part of this county committee, who is not political, who is the editor of a newspaper, who all we did was ask to come and speak, and he on his own comes to us and says, someone is engaging in subversive behavior by trying to get me to not only cancel, but cancel at the last minute so that you would not be able to have a substitute speaker. That is intentionally trying to harm this committee that we are charged with protecting. This is why we feel that this is so serious. So what you need to do is ask yourself, is the behavior that you saw from Point Representative Huff last month Point consistent with what these charges are? Hello. Is the behavior that you, excuse me, I have Point of order. Floor. Is the behavior that you're seeing tonight what you want to see as part of this committee, and more importantly, what you want to see as the leadership of this committee, because he's clearly stated his intent to do so. That's what you need to consider when you cast your vote tonight. Further discuss, uh, Murphy? The executive committee is not the only set of people to talk with Brandon Smith. At the end of the last month's meeting, when he had explained that he wanted more information of what was going on in Concord, I gave him my business card, which we have <coughs> authored for our interstate legislature. We normally write once a week or maybe two weeks to give our readers an update. So he called me, and this topic came up, not by me, and the name that he gave me was Greg Tuck. Again, an unsolicited phone call from Brendan Smith. Lambert. So what he is saying is that we are going to take a vote to eliminate a member of this committee, a very active, uh, very sound conservative Republican who is a fine legislator who at the last meeting discussed a very excellent piece of legislation that he is handing off uh, to somebody else because he won't be returning. Because an attempt at disruption was made. Not a disruption, because I was at this meeting and I heard Mr. Smith speak. He gave his presentation. The disruption did not happen. Okay, now it's politics, and for somebody in this room to be shocked that there might be politics taking place, it's like gambling in Casablanca. I'm shocked, I tell you. There was no disruption, and I beseech my fellow members here to seriously question why you would want to eject a member of this committee who's active and who, to my knowledge and to my experience and what I know of his history, is an excellent Republican. And it would be a very tragic day to lose this man from our midst as we move forward and we try to expand Republican principles in the state of New Hampshire. Thank you. I ask the membership to please vote no on executive. Mr. Chairman, <laughs> may, I, may I just add to that, that if you find the evidence credible, you cannot dismiss the attempt simply because it was not successful. The attempt is what is is egregious and subversive. Representative Hardy Bolin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is not a criminal court. <laughs> We're not prosecuting a crime, and nobody should be cross-examined to see things. Um, we're trying, would you want us to judge this whole thing based on a secondhand conversation 
we wanted to assign motive. We were in at a state house, but we shouldn't be assigning motive. We yeah. don't know what the alleged motives are for what happened. <coughs> Two second hand conversations. And secondly, is this a sort of message that we want to send to the membership that if you feel that you're being uh, not protected by somebody that we're uh, you, that you're, you're being threatened somehow by a conversation that takes place outside this meeting that we're going to be uh, brought to trial here. Rejected. Rejected. Mm -hmm. It's a terrible mm -hmm. message. Mm -hmm. uh, President Huff? Wow. Peterson? Okay, so um, <laughs> my wife actually wrote me a note, got me thinking about this. So in some way, maybe this whole thing could make sense. It's a possibility. Um, we, I, I mean, so so the editor wears time. Obviously, he's not likely to be a Democrat operative. But the employee at the wears time, what do we know about how that that communication came into the employee? What that person, anybody can say that they're Greg Huff. So could that have been a Democrat operative? How do we know that it, that it wasn't? Yeah, um, for over 15 years, I worked as the Belknap County Republican delegation has had arguments in public, which every single year has been taken advantage of by our political opponents. And I think we see some of the results of that this year. Um, I'm sorry to see all the acrimony. Uh, I assume if this action, whatever we <coughs> alleged, uh, took place, that there was some history behind it. I don't know. I don't know any of the details of this. But I think, frankly, that it's, it's time for us to change our attitude and that when we have differences of opinion, <laughs> that we go and try and work them out one-on-one -on -one and not in public. And that I think we ought to be big enough to say we ought to have a day of saying we forgive each other for all our offenses against each other. And let's go forward from today and concentrate on beating the damn Democrats yeah. who are trying to destroy yeah. this town, this county, this state, and this country. Yeah. Well, John, I, I agree with a lot of your comments there. I want to make it clear this is not being done in public. This is not open to the public. This is this is family business. We are a family. We are the Belknap County Republican Committee, and we purposely asked that this be closed to members only so that this would not be aired out in, in public. But the only way that we can move forward to beat the damn Democrats, to use your term, is if we are unified. And we, when we have people who are trying to go behind our back and subvert our speakers, disrupt our meetings, we can't ignore that. We would be... We would be absolutely derelict in our duty as an executive committee if we took this information from Mr. Smith, who none of us find to be in uncredible in terms of his statement. If we took that information and did nothing, then we would be guilty of, of not doing our job. And then we should step down. But we take this job very seriously. And when someone of Mr. Smith's caliber brings this information to us, and, and it's confirmed by other people, we have to take action on that. We're talking about subversion here, guys. We're talking about trying to destroy one of our meetings. And if that's a, oh, no big deal, let's just move on and kumbaya, then um, that's not the kind of uh, committee that I want to be part of. legal meeting and it seems like the uh, initial uh, introduction by someone indicated that it was not because it wasn't properly noticed. The notice of the meeting was contained at the bottom of the prior notice that was issued in October in, on, in the agenda. Point of order.
no point of order accepted? No, 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 no. Yeah, anything further to no, say? You have to accept the point of order. It has to come in hearing. Mm -hmm. That is what you have to do. You don't have to agree yeah. with it, but you have to accept it and hear it. State your point of order. And thank point you, order. Mr. Chairman. Point of order is, in the bylaws, as you will read them, they say notice has to be made seven days prior. Shall be made seven days <coughs> prior. Not shall be made a month earlier, not six months earlier, not on a piece of paper that we handed out something. It says seven days. Period. You guys wrote it. The point of order. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. State, your point, uh, your state your point of yeah, order. State your point of order. The point of order is a question about the time limit, about seven days. Is that the minimum amount, which also would mean that you can give advance notice to further back in seven days? So you could do two weeks in advance. You could no, do three weeks you can't, sir. That's not what the, the bylaws uh, just say that that's a minimum? No, it says shall be seven days. You guys have the bylaws. Look it up. We're, we're, Judge, I'm ruling the point of order out of order. It's both points of order out of order. The notice of this meeting, the date of this meeting was set forth in the agenda that was circulated at the October meeting when all this kerfuffle took place. And it was sent, it, that was sent out also by email prior to that meeting. So that the notice requirements have been met. Uh, is there further comments before we? Uh, well, we yes, I, 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 that was gonna be my first question. Okay. Um, it seems beyond that, that if, if the gentleman who runs the uh, weird times had come and they didn't get anything good directly uh, from Mr. Huff, um, the request, that would carry more weight than for him to say, well, somebody asked me on this word, it, it seems like it's pretty shaky. And then the third thing is, I don't know what would be gained. You know, if you were going to rain down some incredible destruction on this committee um, by knocking out a speaker at the last minute, it's just, it would be no different than if a guy came down with the flu and he called the game. I, I understand the motivation would be different if you would accept that Mr. Huff did that, but the overall effect on this committee or on the executive group or on our activities would have been minimal to non-existent. It just seems like we're, we're stirring up a big pot here, and right now, after somewhat of a clobbering we just took, we need to calm that pot down. Thank you. That's all, sir. How, how do you know how do you know that Greg Huff was the one who called or emailed <coughs> to cancel the speaker? How do you know it was Greg Huff that did that? Do you have proof? The person, shall I answer the question? Yeah. Okay. The person who spoke to Mr. Smith said that that person was known to that employee that the person that made the request, represent, alleged to be Representative Huff, was a personal acquaintance of the individual, the employee, who then passed along the request on behalf of that personal acquaintance. This was not some anonymous person. The, the representation that was made was, this is a person that I know, and this person has asked me rather than to speak to you directly, because I know you to <coughs> carry out this request. Is that, is that, does that answer your question? I wanna be clear. This was not some um, out of the blue phone call from somebody representing to be uh, a Greg Hub. The person was effectively authenticating on the basis of the relationship with Greg Hub, that it was Greg Hub who in fact was the person rather than somebody impersonating him. Dr. Alstrom. Yeah, this is very, very uh, troublesome. We're eating our own. We've got to stop this. You're a lawyer. I'll, I'll hire you to defend me on this if somebody accused me of calling to persuade a speaker from speaking here. I'm asking you to advise me if I didn't do it, how would I prove I didn't do it? The 
even if the person said that called, I know this person, I know Dave Armstrong, he called me and said this, and he passed it on. There's no proof here. There's no proof. Yeah, there's, there's insinuation. Maybe it happened, maybe it didn't. I don't feel confident that, you know, it couldn't have been somebody else that might have come up with it. But how would you tell me to respond to protect myself from something I didn't do? Well, there's no proof of something I didn't do. It's hard to prove negative. That's right. Yeah. Mr. All right. Mr. Chair, can I just um, read from the bylaws? It says regular meetings shall require seven calendar days notice. It doesn't say shall be noticed exactly seven days prior. Seven calendar days notice is, is, is the required minimum. And since I was on the bylaws shall. committee, I know that that was the minimum. Representative Aldrich. You know, this seems like something citizens for Belknap would do. It is. I think it is. There's no proof that I see. This guy says this. He told this guy. You're going to convict somebody on that? I'm sorry. May I say one thing? Yeah. I've been coming to this meeting for two years. Stand up, please. And we always have nice, calm meetings with common sense until these three guys show up. And you're rude. And you're, you interrupt. You don't allow the meeting to go on. You're stopping it. This is ridiculous. You don't, I've never even seen you at these meetings other than twice. You, I've never, I don't know how many times I've seen you, but not me <coughs> or you. You guys show up to cause trouble. It's clearly obvious that you do. I'm an investigator. I'm on to you guys. I know I'm going to have to make a comment. Steve, Steve was the last speaker, the last, the last discussion. And I, I agree with a lot of both sides of what is what are being said. But Mr. Huff, how bombastic and, and outburst have I seen from last week also been disruptive. However, the case is being made that there is no sound evidence. And I have to agree with that. I think this is one of those things that should not be acted on right now. We should pause, catch our breaths, and see how, how many times Mr. Huff shows up in these meetings. Because I haven't seen him in these meetings before. I haven't been to every one, but I don't see you here a lot. But every time I've seen you here the last two times, you've been angry and forceful and just disruptive. Calm yourself down, please. Okay. Come to a meeting We're, and contribute. All right, the, the vote is taken. Be in this camp hating one another. The vote will be You're taken. You're right. We should be going after the Democrats, not ourselves. Right. All right. <laughs> we need to, uh, to check off the general members who are receiving the ballots. Only general members receive the ballots. Uh, Mark, you, you probably need to call up and ask because there are some people here who are not getting their ballots. Mr. Chairman, will there be a roll call? There's no, no roll it's call. It's a secret ballot. It's a secret ballot. It's a secret ballot. People bringing the charges are going to be counting the ballots. Is that? Don't go there. Yeah. Ryan, can, can they uh, call on you to uh, tabulate the ballots? Total with a yes or no. Yeah. And and uh, and how about uh, Mr. McCarthy? Two of you. We'll, we'll tabulate the votes. Mm -hmm. 
Joshua Levine don't have one? Laura Bezik? Right here. You got the problem. Robert Comstock? Options are yes or no. Yes or no? Yes or no? Thank you. That's Steve what I Kibble said. Not Kibble enough Kibble information. Kibble. We abstain? Can we abstain? Yes or no? Just put, put in a blank ballot. Kit Murphy. No. I don't. I don't believe there's enough information. You don't know. You. <laughs> Sorry, abstain. Yeah. We're, we're taking a we're taking a vote here on a motion. You as general members have one of three options. You can vote yes, you can vote no, or you can abstain. The way you abstain is by taking a ballot and not putting a Y, E, S, or an N, O, or a Y, or an N on there. You just return a blank ballot. A blank ballot is an abstention. Okay. Jim Thompson. Steve Here. Wolf. We don't take walks in I this have school. one. Yeah, I the question the question the question is the motion to revoke the status of Greg Huff as a general member of the BCRC so yes a yes approves that motion thank you Susan Sheaford, Peter Sandstrom, Richard Shea, John Palmer, Tom Forte, Steve and Carlene Peterson, Ryan O'Neill, Ryan. Ryan is here at this front. Terry and Jill McCarthy, Carl McCarter, Richard Littlefield. Fold your ballots and put them in uh, Ryan's uh, hat, will you? Juliet. Yes. And John Harrington. Is that it, Don Ewing? Is it Don Ewing, general member? No, Don Ewing is a general member. Don Ewing. John Harrington just voted on it last week. Golter did not get a ballot. Mark, Erica Golter. I saw, I saw Justin Wilson. Did you call Steve Earl? Oh, Steve. Steve Earl's not in here. Steve Earl's not in here. Second. Uh, Second. Here's some more here. Uh, you and McCarthy will tabulate. Anybody got ballots that haven't turned in, please turn them in.
please announce the totals for me. The result of the voting with four abstentions, 16 yeses, and 18 noes. I'd like to make a motion. You're out of order. I'm not out of order. You're out of order. You're not I'm a general not member. Order, general members can only can make a motion. Yes, the GOP. I am not out of order. I am allowed to make a motion. No, you are not. Yes, I am. Not under that bylaw. Yes, exactly. you you right now. During the court. Would you like to speak to the New Hampshire GOP right this minute? During, I am allowed to make a motion. We, we are operating under the bylaws of the Belknap County Republican Under the bylaws of the New Hampshire GOP, I am allowed to make a motion. You have finished your sentence, you finish your sentence Representative mind. Board, and now I will finish my sentence, and if I don't finish my sentence, Representative Board, I'm going to ask that finally you be removed from this meeting for insubordination. So you will remain silent until I finish my statement. Whether you agree with it or not, we operate the Belknap County Republican Committee under the approved set of bylaws by the Belknap County Republican Committee, and you can smirk and shake your head all you want and mock and ridicule all you want, and it doesn't change the fact that this is the Belknap County Republican Committee that was duly organized, duly recognized by the state GOP, passed bylaws, submitted them to the state GOP, and that were accepted by the state GOP without any comment, any recommended changes. Therefore, we do not operate under the rules of the state GOP because we're not the state GOP. We are the Belknap County Republican Committee and a duly constituted and recognized county committee. You are out of order. You are incorrect. I would like to make a motion. You do not make a motion. You're out of order because you're not in the middle of the Can we ask Sheriff Rice? Sheriff Rice can ask me. Okay. You cannot. I would leave on my own to What did you understand? Just remember. What did you understand? You are the what don't you understand an active about no. state representative and state committee member? What don't you the understand? Right to make a motion. What don't, don't you understand? What don't you understand? I have voted no against all of you. What don't you understand about you are not authorized to make a motion? I am authorized. Are the New Hampshire GOP? Um, basically, what we're here to, to discuss tonight and to act on is that on October 3rd, uh, the Belknap County Republican Committee sent out a um, last email to our list announcing the guest speaker at the BCRC meeting for October would be Brendan Smith, the editor for the Weir's Times. Sometime thereafter, Mr. Smith advised the BCRC Executive Committee that Greg Huff uh, contacted the staff of the Weir's Times asking that he, Mr. Smith, withdraw as our speaker. <clears throat> the request was that Mr. Smith not only withdraw from the speaking engagement, but pur purposefully delay his withdrawal until just a few hours before the meeting so that a substitute speaker uh, would be difficult or impossible to obtain. 
uh, offended and troubled, Mr. Smith conveyed the information to uh, uh, Vice Chair Terry, indicating that he had no intention of withdrawing as our speaker. The actions of Mr. Huff appear purposely designed to uh, attempt to disrupt the orderly conduct of the BCRC meeting. Uh, such a, uh, an action uh, is both subversive and harmful to the BCRC. Uh, further, uh, it reflects badly on the Republican Party. Uh, unacceptably disruptive behavior should not be tolerated by any organization intending to be a going concern. We do intend on remaining as a going concern. So, uh, what I would like to, to ask you, uh, Greg, is this. Uh, does the executive committee's uh, charge correctly describe your actions? Did you call the Weir's time? And no. you did not? No. Did you interact with anybody from the Weir's Times? Um, have you had uh, any conversation with someone from the Weir's Times about uh, uh, someone representing themselves as Greg Huff? Did they call you up and say, hey, uh, is this really used? Did you re no. Somebody represented that you called. Did somebody confirm with you that they either had or had not the uh, representation made by the people from the Weir's Times and, and more than one person uh, gave us information that said that you had uh, made the attempt to call uh, or contact the Weir's Times for this purpose. So you're saying that that's incorrect information? Why would they do that? I don't know. Ask them. I mean, it, do, do I, am I going to get to, I don't know how this works. This is an interrogation. Yeah, do I, do I get to uh, answer these things or do I wait to the end after everything's in? Or, or I, I, do you have a comment or you would like to respond? I'm trying to get okay. to the bottom my, of my, I'm not trying to cross-examine you. Okay, uh, my, I'm trying to get to the right uh, answer, and the only way I know to do that is to ask a question. Sure, okay, that's fine. Information that we have is uh, email uh, sent to us. Where's the evidence? I can make accusations. You're out of order, Mr. Board. I'd like to make a motion. You sign in. I'd like to make a motion. I did sign in. I'd like to make a motion. You have no, 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 no stay at standing here, Representative Boards, because you never joined the BCRC. I'm a subcommittee no member. I have you have no standing here. I have standing You have no standing here. You have any voice or vote. You have standing here. You do not. No, you do not. You are out of order. Thank you. Say what you want. You do not have a right to ask questions. I'd like to make a motion. No. Okay, then I have my motion. Thank you. The rules are the rules. Even for you, representative boards, this is like the House. There are rules yep, and there and are I rules. I'd like to make a motion. You cannot object to the rules. I can. Well, go ahead and object somewhere else, but you're, you have no basis okay. for going, going forward. Keep going. Don't tell me I can keep going. You just keep going. You don't give me permission to do anything up here. And you give me permission? I'm not giving you permission. Okay. That's exactly what I'm saying. Keep what going. do you understand keep about going. this? Please. You're not being given permission. I'm You're sorry. out of order. Okay. Go. Thank you. Mark, continue, please. Uh, Mr. Vice Chair, uh, could you convey <clears throat> the content of uh, the email that was received by us? Uh, with its information as we received it? Uh, yes, at uh, 5.21 p.m. on October 10th, 2022, I received the following email from Brendan Thomas Smith. Good evening, Paul. Hope all is well today. This morning, our blank here at the Weir's Times came in to talk to me. An employee of the Weir's Times came in and talked to me. Blank was passing along a message from an acquaintance who is also, I believe, a member of the Belknap County Republican <coughs> Committee. This person was uncomfortable with asking me, really wants nothing to do with politics, but told the acquaintance would give me the message. 
In other words, this acquaintance of this person. It seems that if you in the committee want me to cancel my talk at the meeting this Wednesday, in other words, the very same day, this email comes at 5.22 p.m. on October 10th, the same day as the meeting. Last minute, if possible, so that there would not be a speaker and there would then be more time for them to try and fulfill some agenda. What that agenda is, I'm not sure. I am a bit taken aback that someone would consider using me as a pawn for this particular agenda. In all honesty, I don't even know the... I don't even know personally, who asked our employee, I only know the name. The fact that I wasn't asked personally by a third party, no matter what my response may, might be, is irksome. I debated writing this, but not wanting, to, not wanting to become embroiled in whatever this whole mess is, but after thinking about it, I decided to write you as a friend. I'm still more than happy to come and tell the weird time story to the members of the BCRC on Wednesday, but I don't want to be there if it's going to be turned into some kind of a sideshow. I'd like to keep separate from whatever this might be. Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions. I responded at 5.47 p.m. Hi, Brendan. I'm sorry to hear what has taken place and how you've been affected. Are you able to tell me who asked that you cancel out on us? I hope you will resist any pressure that may be applied to you. Your talk is not going to be political as in advocating for any particular candidate. That's not the point of the appeal to you. The point is apparently to embarrass us. In fact, I recall we discussed that your talk would be more personal in nature and how you came to work for the Weir's Times and what it's been like and so forth. That will be just what we want. Please hold the line and see you, t see you tomorrow night. Where is an email? There is a response. Excuse me, may I continue, Representative Board? So that you have the floor. Thank you, I still have the floor. At 6.05 p.m., Brendan Tom Smith responded to me and, and wrote, Hi, Paul, I don't feel intimidated, just a bit angry. I understand the nature of my talk, and as I said, I am more than happy to still be there, just don't want it to be more than what it is supposed to be. It was Greg Huff that asked the message to be given to me. The other name, I don't recall. Subsequently, when we asked if he would be willing to give us the name of the second person who was, whose name was mentioned to him by the employee who relayed the message having been approached, she said, he said, by Greg Huff, Representative Greg Huff, that name was disclosed to us. And I'm prepared to disclose that name if Ms., uh, Mr. Avier would want me to do so. But that, but that person is not directly involved right now and is secondary to the matter before us. And that, those are the texts of the emails. And so, uh, we're in a position, I'm in a position right now of having to wonder whether these people just concocted all of this. Having never met any of these people before, not knowing them, and all of a sudden out of the clear blue sky, somebody calls, somebody writes to me and says, I was asked to cancel my talk with you tonight and to do it as late, or tomorrow night, and to do so as late as possible so as to embarrass you. You couldn't get another speaker. And to fulfill some sort, apparently, apparently, fulfill some sort of other agenda. Is, is this I am describing to you, I am <laughs> describing to you that these emails did not come solicited on my part, Representative Huff. They came to me unsolicited by people that we had never known before. And can the I question would be, come, Representative Huff, why would these people possibly just concoct this stuff out of thin air and make these accusations against you. And I return to uh, Representative Ayer Bear. You're absolutely right. This is a
is no, a, it's not a joke. It is a joke. joke. I, I, just, I, I want to say on. that's no. ridiculous. I want, I, can this, once joke. again, you're can crawling you? into into uh, oh, what? into our. You're crawling our integrity into. Yes, yes, I yes, am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I like to make a motion. This is this is a serious matter. Yeah, it is a serious matter. I like to make a motion. It is not a joke. If you would give me a moment, I would explain to you why it's a joke. You're belittling these proceedings. No, I'm not belittling these proceedings. You're being given full opportunity to respond to questions and make statements when appropriate. It is not a joke. This is due process. I would like to make a motion. You cannot make a... Oh, my gosh. You're, you're you have no here. standing here, you're Representative I am a state committee member. You, you have, have no standing here. here. Standing Under the bylaws, you are not a member. You have bylaws that you made up out of the thing. What are you, made you up out of what? Mr. Chairman, I should like to have the representative board is removed from the meeting because he is disrupting the proceedings. It's entirely inappropriate. We should be saying the pledge, and we should be thanking our candidates who won yesterday. This is appalling. This is a disgrace. Immediately, please, Chairman, please get this meeting to order. We are not going to stop in the middle of these proceedings. Please sit down and allow this proceeding to continue. Where is the flag? Please sit down and stop <laughs> disrupting the proceedings. You are not in charge of this meeting. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for Mr. Chairman, please, may I have you please direct your comments to me, and if you have to call the meeting to order, I would prefer that I would hear from you. And, and the, the meeting was called to order. I called on Representative A. Bear, who and then asked Representative, Representative Terry to give the text of the emails and the discussion about the source of the emails. I understand, but you see that there's a lot of loose discourse coming. Well, there's a lot of loose discourse because people want to talk. If we could, oh, no. <laughs> if we could have uh, Mr. Huff. Thank you. Did you take the that, role? That is not did, we, did we take the role? Okay. So, since this is conjecture and speculation and pointing fingers, I will uh, do the same. Um, it would seem to me that this is a timely effort. Because we have a thing that's going to be happening here very shortly. A thing that is very important for us here. And that is the election of our council over here. Okay? That's what's coming up. They know they've done a crap job. And I am going to run for the chair. <laughs> they, I would like to make a motion that we can. remove Mr. Huff from the meeting. They can. I second that. No, I wasn't allowed to make a motion. Is the floor All the motions are out of order. Let Mr. Huff speak. So the... Mr. Chairman, next, next question. Take a few comments. No. Uh, let's let Mark continue. What we have at this point is we have a, uh, a situation where... Uh, the BCRC Executive Committee has been made aware of the attempt to undermine the uh, speaker and the uh, meeting agenda at the last meeting intentionally. That is an, an attack on the uh, BCRC uh, at its core. What we have to decide tonight is whether we believe the, the information we got, the emails from the Weir's Times, the, the, the action you took to try and... Uh, no, I'm sorry. No, the, the action you took by reaching out to uh, the Weir's Times... No, I'm going to call it the, the action you took. I did not take any the, such action. That is the information that has been communicated to us. This isn't a court of law. We're using uh, our own best judgment based on the uh, information that was not solicited but sent to us by uh, members of the community. Now, what we need to decide tonight 
is whether or not we believe that the Weir's Times has some motive to make false representations about uh, the action uh, that you took. Now, perhaps you didn't take it. I'm not. I'm going to leave that to the general membership to make their own uh, decision on this. What I want to make sure of is that the general members have the information that the executive committee has. I am also going to make the recommendation that uh, we put this to a vote as to whether you remain a member or not, because such action, if it is uh, deemed by the general membership to be uh, destructive of the organization, should require a response. And it's their decision, not my decision, not the executive committee's decision to take action. So that's what we're here to do tonight, to try and get the information that we have out to the general members so the general members can make their own decision. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, I would like to move that the uh, general members consider that Mr. Huff has failed to fulfill his duties and responsibilities of membership as per Article 3, Section 1B2, which reads, duties and responsibilities of general members shall include the demonstrable support of the activities of the, the county committee. Uh, accordingly, uh, Mr. Huff's actions with respect to uh, disrupting last month's meeting by trying to subvert the uh, speaker are uh, definitely not... Uh, moment, 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 please. You're making a motion? I am making a motion. I'd like to make a motion. Discussion on the motion? Not, not until the motion. Have to make the motion. So, make the motion and let's, let's proceed. Section uh, 1B2 uh, reach, uh, duties and responsibilities of general members shall be demonstrable support of the activities of the com uh, county committee. Uh, the actions that uh, we have be been made aware of are not a good demonstration of support of this committee. Uh, I don't mean the executive committee, I mean the Belknap County Republican Committee. Is there a second? I second that. I have a second here. Uh, is there any discussion on the motion? Dis discussion? Steve? Okay, so uh, I wanted to present a question to, to Paul Terry. Um, were, all the, uh, were all the communications by email only, or did you have any face-to-face -face or, or telephone um, face -face. communications? There, there were face-to-face uh, -face discussions with Mr. Smith subsequent to the uh, sending of the emails. Okay, because uh, I, I was just wondering, I mean, like emails can be, um, you know, uh, impersonated, but I guess that puts that to bed. It was, it was only after a face-to-face -face discussion with uh, Mr. Smith that he, um, he offered in the meeting to tell us the name of the second person whose name was given to him by the employee of the Weirs Times along with Representative Huff in the request for him to cancel the speaking engagement with us and to do so at the latest possible moment. Any further uh, discussion? Um, is this, are we locked into like removing the person from the membership or can it be yeah, something that's the general necessary? membership? In other words, we have a there's the bylaws specify a category of membership called general membership. Yeah. And that has to be done. It, it's an application process yeah. reviewed by the executive committee. A recommendation is made, and the general members, existing general members, then vote to approve the recommendation. Yeah. So when that, that basically that's the status that has been attained right now by Representative Huff. What this motion seeks to do is to revoke that status designation as a general member. There's Which, no alternate, like maybe censuring or something less severe? The, the motion is the motion. The motion is the motion. So, so we're kind of having 
going to be a jury on this evidence that we have based on females. We know the guy's name. Females. What more do we know? How can we verify that guy is a real person? And like, who, uh, what if it is some Democrat operative, for instance, that is going off the cuff? Like, I, don't, I just don't know that so we can judge this based on hearsay and this one name. Who is this person? Brendan Smith is the editor of the uh, the Weir's Times. He came and appeared. Uh, he was here last month, did a speech before us. Um, he exists. He's real. Um, we have both email and in and face-to-face -face communication with Mr. Smith. That's why we um, brought the the accusation to the general membership. So he's saying that he heard directly from Greg that, that Greg asked no. him to... No, you want me to clarify? It's his yes, one of those emails. The email came from Brendan Smith to me, and the email indicated that he had been informed by another employee at the Weir's Times of the request. That person was passing along the request to him based on uh, two individuals who were seeking to have him cancel the speaking engagement with us with the additional request that the cancellation be communicated to us as late as possible. I'd like and to it was because he was so upset by this oh, yes. that he sent me the, the first email. There were subsequent emails uh, which I had read and additionally uh, we met with him uh, in person, in person, to clarify all of this and <coughs> ask him if he'd be willing to give us the name of the second person because we didn't know whether it was a general member or not. And if it was a general member, then we were going to have to consider uh, a, a disciplinary proceeding against the other general member. And it turned out that the person is not currently a general member, the second person. Does that answer your question? Dr. Strang? Uh, but usually, does that answer the question? So, just to clarify, so we don't, we know that one of the persons that contacted the employee of Brendan Smith used to be a general member. No, no he is a general, general member. He's a general it's member. Greg Huff. Yes, it's Greg Huff. Proof. Greg Huff is the, is the person who was named by the by the employee and, and by proof. Brendan Smith to us as the person who wanted him to cancel the meeting. His, uh, his cancel his engagement. Okay. Uh, speaking engagement with us last month. Did you so Comments, uh, discussion, Any, anyone in the back that hasn't spoken already? Um, as you know, I was not able to be here at the October meeting because of my work schedule. I want to make this very clear. This is not about the executive committee versus Greg Huff. This is not about revenge. This is about our job protecting this committee. This is your committee. No, it's not. Okay? And you have people, representatives, representatives, like boards, if you continue okay. to make outbursts, you will be removed from the meeting. Thank you. So our job as the executive committee is to protect this county committee. And what it is brought to our attention by someone who's not part of this county committee, who is not political, who is the editor of a newspaper, who all we did was ask to come and speak. And he, on his own, comes to us and said, someone is engaging in subversive behavior by trying to get me to not only cancel, but cancel at the last minute so that you would not be able to have a substitute speaker. That is intentionally trying to harm this committee that we are charged with protecting. This is why we feel that this is so serious. So what you need to do is ask yourself, is the behavior that you saw from Point Mr. Order. Huff last month Point consistent order. with what these charges are? Hello? Is the behavior Point that, that, excuse me, I have one more. Is the behavior that you're seeing tonight what you want to see as part of this committee, and more importantly, what you want to see as the leadership of this committee, because he's clearly stated his intent to do so. That's what you need to consider when you cast your vote tonight. Further discussion, uh, Mr. Murphy? 
The executive committee is not the only set of people who talked with Brendan Smith. At the end of the last month's meeting, since he had explained that he wanted more information of what was going on in Concord, I gave him my business card. Since we have <coughs> authors who are in the state legislature who normally write once a week or every two weeks to give our readers an update. So he called me, and this topic came up, not by me, and the name that he gave me was Greg Huff. Again, an unsolicited phone call from Brendan Smith. So what you're saying is that we are going to take a vote to eliminate a member of this committee, a very active, uh, very sound conservative Republican who was a fine legislator who at the last meeting discussed a very excellent piece of legislation that he was handing off uh, to somebody else because he won't be returning. Because an attempt at disruption was made. Not a disruption, because I was at this meeting and I heard Mr. Smith speak. He gave his presentation. The disruption did not happen. Okay, now it's politics, and for somebody in this room to be shocked that there might be politics taking place, it's like gambling in Casablanca. I'm shocked, I tell you. There was no disruption, and I beseech my fellow members here to seriously question why you would want to eject a member of this committee who's active and who, to my knowledge and to my experience and what I know of his history, is an excellent Republican. And it would be a very tragic day to lose this man from our midst as we move forward and we try to expand Republican principles in the state of New Hampshire. Thank you. I ask the membership to please vote no on objective. Mr. Mr. Chairman, Mr. May, I, may I just add to that, that if you find the evidence credible, you cannot dismiss the attempt simply because it was not successful. The attempt is what is, is egregious and subversive. Reference Mark Golden. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is not a criminal court. <laughs> We're not prosecuting a crime, and nobody should be cross-examined to things. Um, we're trying, you want us to judge this whole thing based on a second-hand conversation, and you want us to assign motive. We learned in the state house that we shouldn't be assigning motive. We don't know what the alleged motives are for what happened. We do second-hand conversations. And secondly, is this a sort of message that we want to send to the membership that if you feel that you're being uh, not protected by somebody, that we're uh, the, that you're, you're being threatened somehow by a conversation that takes place outside of this meeting, that they're going to be uh, brought to trial here, injected, injected. Like it's a terrible message. Uh, Okay, so um, <laughs> my wife actually wrote me a note, got me thinking about this. So, in some way, maybe this whole thing could make sense. It's a possibility. Um, we, I, I mean, so so the editor of the Weir's Time, obviously, he's not likely to be a Democrat operative, but the employee at the Weir's Times, what do we know about how that that communication came into the employee? What that person, anybody can say that they're Greg Huff. So. Could that have been a Democrat operative? How do we know that it better was citizens for Belknap? Discussion. Yeah, um, for 12 or 15 years, I watched as the Belknap County Republican delegation has had arguments in public which every single year has been taken advantage of by our political opponents. And I think we see some of the results of that this year. Um, I'm sorry to see all the acrimony. Uh, I assume if 
this action, whatever was <coughs> alleged, uh, took place, that there was some history behind it. I don't know, and I don't know any of the details of this. But I think, frankly, that it's, it's time for us to change our attitude, and that when we have differences of opinion, that we go and try and work them out, one-on-one, yes. -on -one, and not in public, and that I think we ought to be big enough to say we ought to have a day of saying we forgive each other for all our offenses against each other and let's go forward from today and concentrate on beating the damn Democrats yes. who are trying to destroy this town, this county, this state, and this country. comments there, I want to make it clear, this is not being done in public. This is not open to the public. This is this is family business. We are a family. We are the Belknap County Republican Committee, and we purposely ask that this be closed to members only, so that this would not be aired out in, in public. But the only way that we can move forward to beat the damn Democrats, to use your terms, is if we are unified. And we when we have people who are trying to go behind our back and subvert our speakers, disrupt our meetings, we can't ignore that. We would, be, we would be absolutely derelict in our duty as an executive committee if we took this information from Mr. Smith, who none of us find to be in, uncredible in terms of his statement. If we took that information and did nothing, then we would be guilty of, of not doing our job. And then we should step down. But we take this job very seriously, and when someone of Mr. Smith's caliber brings this information to us, and, and it's confirmed by other people, we have to take action on that. We're talking about subversion here, Don. We're talking about trying to destroy one of our meetings. And if that's a, oh, no big deal, let's just move on in Kumbaya, then um, that's not the kind of uh, committee that I want to be part of. Good yeah. morning to what they're saying. Yes. Okay, Richard Shea. The, first of all, a question, is this a legal meeting? It seems like the uh, initial uh, introduction by someone indicated that it was not because it wasn't properly noticed. The notice of the meeting was contained at the bottom of the prior notice that was issued in October in, on, in the agenda. Point of order. Point of, order. No point of order accepted. No point of order accepted. Yeah, anything further? No, say. You have to yes. accept the point of order. Ask the parliamentarian. Mm -hmm. That is what you have to do. You don't have to agree with it, but you have to accept it and hear it. State your point of order. Thank point you, order. Mr. Chairman. Point of order is in the bylaws, as you will read them, they say notice has to be made seven days prior. Shall be made seven days prior. <laughs> Not shall be made a month earlier, not six months earlier, not on a piece of paper that we handed out some. It says seven days. Period. You guys wrote it. Point of order. Is the seven day in the bylaws, the, the point of order is a question about the time limit about seven days. Is that the minimum amount, which also would mean that you can give advance notice in further back from seven days. So you could be two weeks in advance. You could no, be three weeks in answer. advance. That's not what the, the bylaws say. just say that that's a minimum? No, it says shall be seven days. You guys have the bylaws. Look it up. We're, uh, I'm ruling the point of order out of order. Both points of order out of order. The notice of this meeting, the date of this meeting was set forth in the agenda that was circulated at the October meeting when all this kerfuffle took place. And it was sent, that was sent out also by email prior to that meeting. So the, the notice requirements have been met. Uh, is there further comments before we... Uh, well, we yes, I, 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 that was just my first question. Okay. Then, um, it seems beyond that that if, if the gentleman who runs the uh, Weird Times had come and indicated that he heard directly uh, from Mr. Hoffman um, the request that would carry more weight that for him to say, well, somebody asked me 
to pass on this word is, is seems like it's pretty shaky. And then the third thing is, I don't know what would be gained. You know, if you were going to rain down some incredible destruction on this committee um, by knocking out a speaker at the last minute, it's just, it would be no different than if the guy came down with the flu and he calls you. I, I understand the motivation would be different if you accept that Mr. Huff did that, but the overall effect on this committee or on the executive group or on our activities would have been minimal to non-existent. It just seems like we're, we're stirring up a big pot here, and right now, after somewhat of a clobbering we just took, we need to calm that pot down. Thank you. That's all from how, how do you know, how do you know that Greg Huff was the one who called or emailed <coughs> to cancel that speaker? How do you know it was Greg Huff that did that? Do you have proof? The person, shall I answer the question? Yes. The person who spoke to Mr. Smith said, that that person was known to that employee. That the person that made the request, represented, alleged to be Representative Huff, was a personal acquaintance of the individual, the employee, who then passed along the request on behalf of that personal acquaintance. This was not some anonymous person. The representation that was made was, this is a person that I know and this person has asked me, rather than to speak to you directly because I know you, to <coughs> carry out this request. Is that, is that, does that answer your question? I want to be clear. This was not some um, out of the blue phone call from somebody representing to be uh, a great puff. The person was effectively authenticating on the basis of the relationship with Greg Huff, that it was Greg Huff who, in fact, was the person, rather than somebody impersonating him. Dr. Hallstrom. Yeah, this is very, very uh, troublesome. We're eating our own. I'm going to stop this. You're a lawyer. I'll, I'll hire you to defend me on this if somebody accused me of calling to dissuade us speaker from speaking here. I'm asking you to advise me, if I didn't do it, how would I prove I didn't do it? Even if the person said that called, I know this person, I know Dave Armstrong, he called me and said this, and he passed it on. There's no proof here. There's no proof. Yeah, there's, there's insinuations. Maybe it happened, maybe it doesn't. I don't feel confident that you know, it couldn't have been somebody else that might have come up with this. But how would you tell me to respond to protect myself from something I didn't do? Well, there's no proof of something I didn't do. Hard to prove negative. That's right. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair can I just um, read from the bylaws? It says, regular meetings shall require seven calendar days notice. It doesn't say shall be noticed exactly seven days prior. Seven calendar days notice. Is, is is the required minimum? And since I was on the bylaws committee, I know that that was the minimum. Days. Representative Aldrich. You know, this seems like something citizens for Belknap would do. It is. Yeah. I think it is. And I think everybody should vote to keep Greg on. There's no proof that I see. This guy says this, and if he told this guy, and you're going to convict somebody on that. I'm sorry. May I say one thing? Yeah. I've been coming to these meetings for two years. Stand up, please. And we always have nice, calm meetings with common sense until these three guys show up. And you're rude, and you're, you interrupt. You don't allow the meeting to go on. You're stopping it. You're welcome. This is ridiculous. You don't, I've never even seen you at these meetings other than twice. You, I've never, I don't know how many times I've seen you here, but not many. <coughs> or you. You guys show up to cause trouble. It's clearly obvious that you do. I'm an investigator. I'm on I, to you guys. I, 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 <laughs> 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 
Oh, uh, that was a comedy club. Steve, Steve well, the last speaker Steve Rowe, by the way. The last discussion. And, uh, I, I agree yeah, I with a lot of both sides of what is what are being said. Uh, Mr. Huff, a uh, bombastic and, and outburst have I've seen from last week also been disruptive. However, the case is being made that there is no sound evidence. And I have to agree with that. I think this is one of those things that should not be acted on right now. We should pause, catch our breaths, and see how many times Mr. Huff shows up to these meetings. Because I haven't seen him in these meetings before. I haven't been to every one. But I don't see you here a lot. But every time I've seen you here the last two times, You've been angry and forceful and just disruptive. Calm yourself down, please. Okay. Come to the meetings Where's... and contribute. All right, the, the vote and stop the being this damn hating one another. You're taken. right. We should be going after the Democrats, not ourselves. Right. right. General members who are receiving the ballots, only general members receive the ballots. Uh, the result of the voting with four abstentions, 16 yeses, and 18 noes, the motion fails. What was that? I'd like to make a motion. You're out of order. I am not out of order. You're out of order. You're not out of order. Member, sir. General members, for the New Hampshire GOP, I am not out of order. I am allowed to make a motion. No, you are not. Yes, I am. Not under a I'm not under a right now. During, would you like to speak to the New Hampshire GOP? I am allowed to make a motion. We, we are operating under the bylaws of the Belknap County Republican. Under the bylaws of the New Hampshire GOP, I am allowed to make a motion. You have finished your sentence, Representative Boards. Now, I will finish my sentence. And if I don't finish my sentence, Representative Boards, I'm going to ask that finally you be removed from this meeting for insubordination. So you will remain silent until I finish my statement. Whether you agree with it or not, we operate the Belknap County Republican Committee under the approved set of bylaws by the Belknap County Republican Committee, and you can smirk and shake your head all you want and mock and ridicule all you want, and it doesn't change the fact that this is the Belknap County Republican Committee that was duly organized, duly recognized by the state GOP, passed bylaws, Submit them to the state GOP and that were accepted by the state GOP without any comment, any recommended changes. Therefore, we do not operate under the rules of the state GOP because we're not the state GOP. We are the Belknap County Republican Committee and a duly constituted and recognized county committee. You are out of order. You are incorrect. I would like to make a motion. You do not make a motion. You're so out of order. You're not the client. Okay. You cannot. I will be home. What do you understand? Just remember. What do you understand? You are the state What do you understand? 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 What do you What do you understand? 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 you understand? What do 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 you understand? Crop TV.